What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Dex and today I've got a fun little group hug deck for you. Well, actually is is group hug the one where you give a lot of creatures to your opponents and then force them to attack each other against their will until eventually you're the last one standing because they killed each other? Yeah, I got a fun little group hug deck for you. This guy's insane, and we're going to do exactly that. We've included a lot of creatures that give our opponents creatures, and then we're going to go ahead and cast this guy. He enters the battlefield, and they've got to attack each other. Well, at least it's only for one turn, right? Not exactly, because we've included a ton of ways to blink this guy to oblivion, create token copies of him. We're going to make sure they're doing that every turn, and we're going to make their life a living hell. Additionally, we have a lot of ways to create a board state ourselves and a lot of creatures that benefit off of entering the battlefield. That way, if we have too much of those effects that blink our commander, we can use them other ways to benefit. If that sounds like a deck you're into, let's get into this deck deck. In this first category, we are going to be talking about ways we can trigger Cardor's ability every single turn. Blade of Selves is one of the most insane cards in the deck because of the amazing synergy, right? Whenever we attack with our commander, we're going to get two tapped in attacking token copies of him, right? Now, not only will that net us our ETB that we want, but because of the legend rule, we're going to have to sacrifice both those tapped in attacking token copies. Now, since they both were attacking, we're going to get three Kodor triggers for each one that died, which was two. So that's six damage to your opponent's face every turn. That's insane. Conjurer's Closet is a little more simple. He's just going to blink every turn and we're going to get that ETB. Jaxus, she's amazing in the deck. Not only does she work on a plethora of cards in the deck, but also works on our commander. Pretty good. Flame Rush Rider, another pretty simple one, right? That same scenario is going to happen with Blade of Selves since it is an attacking token, but not to the same extent. All we really want is that ETB and the extra damage is just icing on the cake. Delino Wild Mage is also a super solid way to not only get value off of the deck in general, but we're setting off that card or trigger. Mimic That, another super simple card that's amazing in the deck. Additionally, like all other cards on this list, it's super solid for the rest of the deck, especially for the hunted cards, that way we can give our opponents a ton of creatures. Finally, we have Felden of the Third Path. If our commander dies, we just recur him from the graveyard with this guy, getting that ETB every turn, and the violence can continue. Moving on to our next category, Generosity. This is where we just give our opponents a ton of creatures. Varchild, pretty simple. Attacks, deals damage, they create that much creatures, those creatures can't attack us, and then additionally, whenever she dies, we get all those creatures, which we can then sacrifice for value. Pretty good. Hunted Dragon and Hunted Horror. Not only are these massive creatures that we can just smash face with, our opponents are going to get some pretty decent sized creatures that they're going to be forced to smash face with. Akron Horse, another solid gift that is just going to keep on giving. Life of the Party, this guy's amazing because again it just gives out tokens that are going to smash face to our opponents. An important thing to remember while I go over this category is that our commander is going to deal damage whenever a token in combat dies. This is just going to add salt to the wound, dealing a ton of damage to our opponents over the course of a game. Xantia Sleeper Agent. Hey, don't say I never gave you anything. This card's amazing. Everybody's gonna be able to draw cards and nothing bad will happen. Last but not least, we have Captive Audience. This card's amazing. Give this to the player near the end of the game that has somewhat avoided all of your shenanigans. They have a high life total, they've basically played no creatures all game, and they're just like, that commander does not affect me very much. This card is my answer to that player. Now, they're gonna have no hand, very little life, and your opponents are gonna have a huge board state. That guy's definitely gonna die, and then your other opponents are not long for this world either. It'd be kind of weird to let our opponents have all the fun, so we also run a go wide strategy. Ogre Slumlord. This guy's just gonna generate us some tokens whenever our opponent's non-token creatures die or our non-token creatures die. Death Tyrant is gonna be amazing in the deck because we can sacrifice our attacking creatures for value and then get more token creatures. Additionally, it can give us creatures off of our opponent's blocking, which is pretty good as well. We do include both Krinkos. I see people give some backlash for including these in non-goblin decks, but honestly, these guys are just solid all around. They create fodder, they grow really fast, and the board state they create is unmatched by a lot of other creatures. Sifter of Skulls. This guy can create a lot of little 1-1s, and additionally, we can sack those 1-1s for mana, which is honestly what we're going to be using them for 9 times out of 10, but hey, why can't a little Scion token get in the red, right? 
Zerzoth Chaos Rider, because who doesn't like a little chaos in their commander game? This guy can add to dealing damage to our opponents, additionally it can make them discard those key pieces that they're holding on to. Talonalus Sky Summoner, this deck is her home, right? Because half the time this girl just gets chump blocked, she's dead, and that powerful ability goes unused. Well, now we can use her ability consistently every turn because all of our opponents are going to be tapped out due to our commander's ability. Lastly we have Ghoul Caller Gisa. Who can say no to a massive board of zombies, am I right? She's simple, she sacrifices something, she just works. Moving on, let's talk about the core of the deck. We have Blood Artist. This girl's amazing because she's just going to give us damage to point wherever we want whenever a creature dies. Notably, that's going to be a lot. She's also going to gain us quite a bit of life. Massacre Worm. On top of being a board wipe, this guy also has the added effect. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that opponent loses two life. That can get scary really fast. Sir Conrad the Grim. Another card that can get really scary for our opponents really fast. He's going to do a lot of damage whenever anything dies, whenever anything leaves the graveyard, whenever one of our creatures enters the graveyard. This guy just does everything and points it everywhere. Toshiro Umazawa just gives us the option to cast our instance from our graveyard, which is pretty useful. Phyrexian Dragon Engine can be useful in a pinch, but let's be honest, it's just because we run Mishra in this deck. And Mishra's a house on his own. Remember, this guy is going to make our opponents each lose life equal to the number of creatures we attack with, and then we gain that much life. He can end the game pretty quickly. Additionally, if we do go ahead and meld them into that giant dragon, I'm just going to have some fun smashing face with a 9-9, making people discard cards, and doing all kinds of other degenerate stuff. Now, I'm wondering if you noticed the same thing I noticed whenever I was building this deck. Huh, we've got a lot of incidental life gain. How can we abuse that? Enter Lorcan. This guy fits into the deck perfectly. We're going to go ahead and steal our opponent's creatures. Now we get all of that value and we're paying life to do it, which again, we have a lot of access life to pay. Port Razor is going to be another messed up card in the deck, right? Because remember, our opponents are going to be tapped out nine times out of ten. Well, now we're going to go ahead and get three additional com or two additional combat steps, which can be crazy and can end the game on its own. We do run Swiftfoot Boots for just an added little bit of protection. Chainer Nightmare Adept can give us access to all of our graveyard. Diabolic Intent is just going to be a solid tutor. And that's going to do it for um, the core of the deck. Moving on to card draw, we have Karazakar. This guy's going to be pretty good. Yes, it's going to give our opponents some card advantage. But it's going to give us triple the amount it's giving our opponents. So if we can't win using that, that's kind of that might be on us, right? Garna, Blood Fist of Keld. I really like this because it synergizes perfectly with our commander. Our commander wants creatures to die when they're attacking. Garna wants to let us draw cards whenever attacking creatures dies. Works really great. Harvester of Souls. Whenever a creature dies, we go ahead and draw a card. Well, non-token, but notably everybody's going to be attacking, so a lot of creatures are going to be dying. We're going to see a lot of profit from this guy. Dark Prophecy. Whenever one of our creatures dies, we're going to draw a card. Notably, that even works on tokens, which is amazing. Camber the Plunderer. I like this one because we get that blood token, and blood tokens are pretty useful, but notably they just loot you. Skull Clamp is going to be amazing in the deck to just get rid of those tokens, or we can equip them to something, sacrifice it, pretty useful. Florian is amazing card selection, right? We're going to deal a lot of damage to our opponents, dig really deep, and get the exact card we need to play next turn. Faithless Looting, I love this card, smooths out your draws, you dig four deep, you only have to discard two cards, what's not to love about it? Jessica's Will, another amazing card, you draw three cards, add a lot of mana to your mana pool, and then you just get, you know, tons of options. Wheel of Misfortune, I like this because we're really nagging at our opponent's life total, so they're not going to want to bid very much, that way we are almost guaranteed to get those seven cards, pretty good. Prosper, not only is this guy card advantage, but he is also ramp. You get treasure tokens, you get card advantage, what's not to love? Moving on to ramp, we have Mahadi Emporium Master and Pitiless Plunder. Two insane treasure producers that are going to be perfect in the deck. Black Market is going to be another insane card in the deck. Our opponent's creatures are going to be dying, our creatures are going to be dying. This is going to generate a lot of mana very quickly. Professional Facebreaker, another one that creates treasure tokens that can also be used as card advantage. Grim Hireling, 
treasure token producer that can also be used as removal. Arcane Signet, Rakdos Signet, Solid Ramp, Charcoal Diamond, Fire Diamond, again, Solid Ramp. Lastly, we have everybody's favorite, Soul Ring. Let's finish it up with removal, Murderous Rider. I like this guy because not only is it a removal spell, but then you get a creature on top of it. But Devil, solid removal card, terminate again, solid. Goblin Bombardment, this is going to be a really good sack outlet, and it's just going to be able to take out our opponent's creatures or even our opponents. Vandal Blast, really good for taking care of the treasure situations that are getting out of control in Commander right now. Feed the Swarm, any of those really important enchantments are gone, Chaos Warp, any permanent, and Blasphemous Act. I really like Blasphemous Act because it always is going to cost one red mana. That's going to do it for the deck tech, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, I hope this helped you out in your deck building endeavors. I'll see you in the next one.